homeschooling is the biggest blessing for me, but it's probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. I know it's really convenient for you to keep your child at home. Why isn't she in school? Most homeschoolers are behind. Do you want your child to be behind? That was a huge misinformation there from the doctor that it's so hard for us moms sometimes, the things that we give up. I know that God called me to do this. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If it is your first time here, welcome. I am a homeschool mom of three kids and on my channel I, I talk about homeschool of course but also motherhood, lifestyle, and anything in between. So if you like those types of videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Today's video is a bit of a hard one for me to film and as you can read by the thumbnail and the title of the video um, it's something pretty sensitive to us homeschool moms especially when there is so much judgment out there it's really hard sometimes for us to not get defensive or upset with certain judgment that comes from you know family friends health professionals or even acquaintances or you know a partner so it's very sometimes hard for us to talk about these things but also i just thought that this video could be an encouragement as well because i think that it's nice for us to talk about these things that do happen for us to become stronger and know how to respond when we have people judging us for you know a decision that we made as a family but also a lifestyle that we have so grab a cup of tea i have mine here uh some water <laughs> it says don't make me use my mom voice i haven't used my mom voice yet today i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to use my mom voice but we'll see <laughs> my mom gave me this mug i love it so let's um let's talk about this situation that has happened and it's just gonna be very much like a story time kind of vibe here so let's start from the beginning my friend messaged me on Instagram and she said, Gina, I need to talk to you. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, it was already 10 o'clock at night. We're like, okay, let's talk tomorrow. And she's like, okay, I'll call you tomorrow. I just watched your video, uh, one of your videos, and I feel so much better after watching it. And I'm like, okay, I know it's homeschool related because I just uploaded a video that was homeschool related. Uh, I did have some encouragement in there. So maybe she wants to talk to me about something homeschool. Also, before I start, I got permission from her to share this story because there's a lot, guys when you think that it can't get any worse it just gets worse <laughs> i think this is one of like the worst situations that i've heard of um personally like someone that i know of anyways she said that she went to her doctor's office just right before they, they're starting homeschooling they were going to start in september and she just wanted to make sure to do like a little checkup with her daughter but also because she had a bit of a situation that was going on i asked my friend if i could share you know the details and she said share everything so i'm sharing everything because she gave me permission but her daughter was having a little bit of an issue with uh whenever she would cry she would hold her breath and um my my sister actually had this it's it's quite common like kids sometimes hold their breaths and she was just a little bit worried so she mentioned that to the doctor when she went for a visit and uh with her doctor the doctor said you know what that's normal that happens it's exactly what she thought and what i told her i was like yeah that definitely happens it's pretty common with kids uh and the doctor even told her when they were doing the you know the beginning like you go into the office before you do the checkup they ask if you have any issues and that was what she said and they said he he basically said you know what that's fine that's normal my son even had that as well growing up just don't don't you know give too much attention to it it'll pass my sister actually had that issue as well and she would actually faint because she would hold her breath so uh it passed with time so that is something that's quite common so uh the doctor said everything's fine then he starts assessing you know the you know her daughter and starts asking questions and he's like are you excited for school and her daughter is like yeah i'm excited and after the daughter i don't know if the daughter mentioned it i think it was the daughter that mentioned it she's like yeah i homeschool the doctor he was not impressed he looked at my friend and he's like why isn't she in school 
after my friend is like, well, homeschooling is legal, so it's fine. Like she, we homeschool, we chose to homeschool. He's like, put your daughter back in school. That's where she belongs. She needs to be around other kids. Most homeschoolers are behind. Do you want your child to be behind? And my friend is like, well, my daughter isn't behind. If anything, she's, she's actually on par or even, you know, above her, you know, her, her grade level. Like she's fine. And she said, no, she's fine. Like she's, she's okay. He's like, no, but she, he, she needs to be around other kids. It's not good for her to be homeschooled. And my, my friend was kind of taken aback. My friend is not very like an argumentative person. She doesn't like arguing. She's very about the peace, but also she was very blindsided. She felt like she was in a safe space and she just was not expecting the doctor to basically attack her on, you know, her choice to homeschool. She's like trying to like kind of ignore the doctor and you know, whatever, let's keep on going. The doctor said his thing that she shouldn't be homeschooling, whatever. Uh, my, my, fr my friend just said it's legal. That's the choice that we made. Thank you for, you know, for your opinion, but that's what we decided as a family. The doctor turned, you know, to the daughter and starts like examining her, doing all the things that doctors do. And um, he goes to her daughter and he says, tell your mom to put you back in school. My friend's right there, guys. She's right there behind the doctor. Like she's hearing this. And she, my friend was like shocked. She didn't know like what to do with that situation, how to handle that situation. But he keeps on going. He's like, tell your mom to put you back in school. Don't you miss your friends? I'm pretty sure you miss your friends. And her daughter's like, yeah, I miss my friends, except for one girl that used to bully me because she did go to school before. And he's like, no, that's okay, that happens. But you miss your friends, right? You miss being around your friends. Uh, don't you wanna go to school? Don't you wanna be around your friends? Tell your mom to put you back in school. And my friend was like her, she was just, she was just shocked at this point. And the daughter was kind of confused as well. And she looks at her mom and she's like, mom, like, what am I supposed to say? And uh, I think my friend was just kind of like, okay, we'll talk about it later. Like you're homeschooled, we'll talk about it later. And he goes to my friend after that, because my friend, I'm pretty sure she's like about done with this whole doctor's visit. But the doctor goes and tells her, look, I know it's really convenient for you to keep your child at home. Convenient, guys. <sighs> my God convenient for us to keep our kids at home convenient now when when my my friend told me this i was kind of like wow convenient for us it's convenient for us we'll agree that there is some convenience to it the flexibility he wasn't he wasn't thinking of that he's not saying about the convenience of actually being able to pick a curriculum that works for your child going at your child's pace he wasn't he wasn't thinking like that. He was kind of putting her down, saying that it's convenient for you and comfortable for you to keep your child at home. Homeschooling is the biggest blessing for me, but it's probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. It means a lot of sacrifice. It means that sometimes homeschool families have to give up another income. Sometimes there's two parents that have to work to be able to afford, you know, to, to live, especially nowadays with inflation, and still be able to homeschool. Some of us moms, no, all of us moms, give up something to be able to homeschool. If anything, it's very convenient for me to put my kid in public school. I'm sorry, but it's not convenient for me Personally, it's more convenient for me, I'm talking about me, for me to put my kids in school. Especially now in Canada, there's so many benefits, guys. There's so many benefits that we can apply for, including $10 a day daycare here in Canada, depending if you qualify. So there's so many conveniences that we can take advantage of that comes with the public school system. Some of us have given up our hobbies our side time hustles. And that's one thing that my friend did. She even told me, Gina, I was so excited about that year. 
I was, I already, she's a photographer. So she said that I gave up a little bit of my side hustle. I haven't been working on, you know, my, it's a hobby, but it's also her profession because I wanted to focus more on the kids. I had all my curriculum ready in a couple of weeks we were going to start. I was prepping our homeschool space. We were so excited. And then this doctor comes and tells me that it's convenient for me to keep my kid at home. She was shattered. She was shattered. And what people don't understand that it's so hard for us moms sometimes, the things that we give up to be with our kids at home. I think people don't understand that. And we do it. It's a sacrifice that we're willing to make and it makes us happy, but it's still a sacrifice that we have to make. Lots of sacrifices have to be made. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think we do it because of conveniences. I don't think people understand how much this homeschooling lifestyle can be wonderful, but it also can be hard and that's okay. And the doctor throwing that at her face, I think really did crush her spirits. But don't worry, it gets even better. At this point, she was kind of like, oh, I can't wait until this, this appointment is over. The doctor just keeps on going. He's like, what do you do for socialization? She needs to be around other kids. My friend, her daughter is a very social butterfly. So my friend does something with her every single day. You don't have to do this because every child is different, but she saw that need. So she's part of like nature study groups. Um, she's part of, she has gymnastics, arts and crafts. On the weekends, they go to church and they have like a church group full of kids. This girl, there is nothing that this girl does not do, This her daughter does not do and her son to be socialized. They are around kids all the time. And she did explain this to them. And he's like, no, that's not enough. They need to be in a classroom. A classroom, guys? <laughs> Being around a bunch of kids does not mean that you're socialized. It just does not mean that. And people have that in their head, that being in a classroom means that your child will not be lonely, that they will be well socialized. That's not the case. If it was, a lot of kids would not be depressed right now. And a lot of kids would not feel lonely, OK? There's a lot of bullying that goes on in school as well. And that's one of the reasons sometimes that, you know, parents and families, they want to homeschool their kids. So socialization, I don't think people understand. And let's talk about the misinformation here. You know what I'm saying? About what socialization is and the child being behind that most homeschoolers are behind. That was a huge misinformation there from the doctor. And I feel like this doctor is using that piece of paper that he took several years to get to use that, you are a doctor, you're not a homeschool expert. So people have to understand that just because you have a piece of paper and you went to university and yes, we respect you and whatnot, but that does not mean you are specialized in all things, including homeschooling. He goes to her and says, that's not enough. She needs to be in a classroom. Okay, so she's like, okay, whatever. Whatever I say right now is not gonna be enough. He goes to her and he's like, at least tell me this. And she's like, okay at least tell me that you are a teacher. She's like, no, I'm not a teacher. You don't have to be a teacher to homeschool. He's like, even worse. Honestly, <sighs> if that was me guys, I would, I would be like, I'd be. It takes a special person, okay, to not blow a gasket. But it gets better, guys. This is not the worst part, right? He said everything that, you know, people end up saying to people at homeschool or even thinking of it, he put it all out there. She was feeling super, you know, down at this point. And um, obviously you do not have to be a teacher. So if you're watching this video for the first time, you do not need to be a teacher. It's, it is proven that it does not determine if your child will do good academically because of your schooling, your schooling, you as a parent, you do not need some type of schooling to homeschool, okay? And it's proven, and if it wasn't proven, I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't be allowed. Here in Ontario, Canada, you don't need anything. Like, it's just the easiest place to homeschool. Like, there's no restrictions whatsoever. No help whatsoever, but no restrictions either. So it's proven, guys, it's proven, and a lot of university and colleges love homeschoolers because they do so well. So if that's one of the, you know, the myths out there, right? The misinformation about, you know, um, homeschooling. So 
at this point, I mean, he's already crushed her spirits at this point. This mom, you know, she's given up so much to homeschool her child. If I were to describe this mom and I would be like super mom and super dad because her husband on his days off, when he homeschools the kids too. He steps up to the plate. They are an amazing like duo, you know, homeschool dad, homeschool mom. They're just like, oh man, super, super, super man and super woman, okay? But he ends up, you know, hammering that nail right into the wall. And he goes to her and says, you know what? Homeschooling is making your daughter have this issue of when she cries, she holds her breath. Homeschooling is making your daughter sick. He gave her a diagnosis already. He already he already told her that his son used to do this too. It's pretty common in kids. Now, because you do not like homeschooling, you're gonna go tell a mom that the daughter is having this issue because she homeschools. That is ridiculous because everything else did not convince this mom to stop homeschooling. At this point, my friend, you know, she, she's upset, felt like crying. She spoke to her husband. Her husband, the first thing he said is like, this, this guy is talking garbage. Obviously, do not listen to him. It's all garbage that he said. Um, he, he asked her like, do you defend yourself? And she felt, I think what made her cry even more is that she didn't have like, you know, when you're blindsided and you don't have the words to say like, you know, defend yourself. I think that really hurt her as well because she's not confrontational guys. And she didn't know how to defend herself at that moment. And we were talking and we cried, we talked about it and she we just we just came to the conclusion and guys i am christian okay so this is coming from a christian perspective but the enemy is so angry at us homeschooling parents we are raising our kids to get to know god do you know how much the enemy is trying to bring us down as a family to test our patience daily and get us frustrated and you know and get other people to bring us down and judge us she left that office saying that maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I should reevaluate, you know, this homeschooling thing. And she, she was a mess. She was a mess the whole day. And she told me she watched one of my videos later on that night. She spoke to her husband. She didn't speak to me yet, but she was already feeling better. After, you know, just talking to her husband, she watched one of my videos and I'm like, well, how did my video help you? But honestly, if one of my videos can help someone, I think that like mission accomplished on my channel. So she, she, we talked about it and we just said the enemy is angry. He is angry with our kids. The things that they're teaching in public school, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't right now. I would not be able to. We are doing the best we can to raise our kids to get to know God. That's one of the reasons I homeschool. So you really do have to remember your reasons why. Go back to them and get prepared for these questions emotionally and to what to say sometimes, because sometimes it's good to kind of express yourself if someone asks you something, you're able to communicate with them what you're feeling. And in the beginning, I had a hard time doing that. I know I did, but I was never attacked like that. And it reminded me a lot of the book homeschool bravely. After I got off the phone with her, the first thing I did is I sent her this book. I went on Amazon. I sent her a little note letting her know that she is the best homeschool mom ever and to tell her to read the book because the first chapter from this book, the homeschool mom here, she had the same situation happen to her where her doctor, she had a lot, a lot of experience homeschooling. She has a blog and everything. She talks wonders about homeschooling and she was blindsided at that point. And she felt bad. And I think we all sometimes are blindsided and this can happen to any of us. But I hope that this can be an encouragement to you because there are gonna be those people that are judgmental. I just hope that when I get to heaven and I get to hug Jesus, he'll tell me that I know the sacrifices you made, but look, your kids are here now. So, all the sacrifices that you make to homeschool your kids, to do anything for your kids, it's not even about homeschooling. 
all the sacrifices were worth it. That I can see my kids in heaven one day and we will be happy. Because none of that matters if we aren't together. So I know that God called me to do this. I know that I am doing the best thing for my family by homeschooling my kids. And I hope that if you ever go through anyone that's judging you for your decision to homeschool, that you pray that God can give you the courage. That doctor, she doesn't have to go to that doctor anymore. But I know that there's a lot of families that go through this with close family members, partners. I pray that God gives you the strength and the courage to keep on going. If God has called you to do this, is because there is no higher mission than raising our kids in the right paths. Having said that, guys, at the end of the day, my friend, she's, that was just a moment, right? That, you know, that in that moment, she felt, you know, maybe she should reevaluate her decision. But after, you know, speaking to me, we started laughing, we cried, we laughed, did all the good stuff. Of course, she's still homeschooling. But we were hoping, when I asked her if I could share her story, I was hoping that this could encourage you in your homeschool journey. That you are not alone in having these judgments. And of course, that health professional, he crossed a line. So wrong, all the things that he said to her. So, so wrong. But we're gonna go through that. And we're in this together. That's why I love this community, that we can talk about it, that we can, learn and grow from it together. I hope that this video could encourage you to keep on going, to let go of the judgment, because I know that God sees us and he sees our heart and he knows the sacrifices that we make. And he knows that us as the parents has called us to this mission to raise up our child in the path toward God. If this encouraged you in any way, share it with a friend that, that might encourage them to keep on going because we are not alone. So I hope that you guys like this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And guys, I'll see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you.